not realize it, but plastics play an important role in virtually every part of your life. From automotive bumpers, interiors and engine parts, to water pipes and power cables, the shoes on your feet, the smartphone in your hand, the packages on grocery store shelves. Plastics are everywhere, making our lives better. But to tell the story properly, we should really go back to the beginning. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm here to show you how an ethane molecule like me becomes the plastics that help people every day. It all starts with crude oil or natural gas. Once these natural resources have been extracted, they're refined for use in a multitude of ways, including gasoline for cars, fuels for heating homes, and raw materials to make plastics. Processing with heat and or chemicals separates the oil and gas into the components needed to produce specific materials. In the case of plastics, that's molecules of propane and ethane like me. Which, after all, is what the story is really about, right? The ethane and propane feedstocks are transported to a chemical complex called a cracker. The cracker is made up of three main parts, furnaces, compressors and distillation columns. First, let's head to the furnaces, which are rather tropical. In fact, the heat output of one large cracker furnace is equal to about 2,000 home furnaces, and there can be 10 or more of these furnaces in a large ethylene cracker. Inside the furnace tubes, the ethane and propane molecules are heated to temperatures over 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. I get a little sweaty just thinking about it. Anyway, at such blazing hot temperatures, the molecules crack, breaking into even smaller molecules of ethylene, propylene and other hydrocarbons. Next, the smaller molecules move on to the compressors, where the pressure builds and builds until the molecules race into the distillation columns. These huge towers can be over 200 feet tall and are made up of as many as 200 trays that sort out the different types of molecules. By the time the molecules go through the distillation columns, they've been separated into groups of ethylene, propylene and other hydrocarbons. The separated molecules, or monomers, are now ready for a trip to the polymerization reactor. Here, the ethylene monomers are linked together to form long polymer chains. Each polymer has its own distinct structure, size, and properties, depending on the various types of monomers and co-monomers used. The polymerization process can also include the addition of plasticizers, dyes, and a wide range of other chemicals to produce finished plastic resins. Plastic converters and fabricators then make the resins into things like automotive components, containers for food, beverages, personal care and cleaning supplies, jacketing for wire and cable, and multi-layer films for resealable bags and pouches. In these and countless other applications, plastics help improve everyday life. Recycling, waste-to-energy programs, and other end-of-life options are helping increase sustainability. And the ongoing development of innovative materials and processes point to an even better future. So, now you know how a molecule of ethane is transformed into plastic. And hopefully, you also have a better understanding of one of the many ways Dow helps improve life around the world. Molly! Time to get cracking. Well, gotta go make myself useful. See you real soon. Bye.